Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a Blaze casting presentation. Bring you guys a game between Level Three Jakiro and Hello, This Is Dog. So, it's gonna be an interesting game here. We saw HDIL do extremely well, or it's TIL, whatever, uh, do extremely well up against Smiley Face in the previous round. Uh, shut down the Oathkeeper player, which was a Templar Assassin, uh, up in the middle lane really well with his Radiant mid pulls and just controlled the game extremely well despite picking up two late game carries so it worked out pretty well for them and we'll have to see if that's going to be the style they bring to this game or not but they are going up against level 3 Jakiro captained up by Viridian and I am joined here by my co-caster today Rainmaker how's it going man? Hey I'm doing pretty well and I'm pretty excited to see this game you know right now I'd say that the biggest uh, offenders that have you know Daza first band stage are definitely the bounty hunter and the dark seer so uh, I'm curious to see which one level 3 Jakiro will be going for. Darkseer does lend you a l very well to pick up a spend later on, just to get that huge amount of AoE damage. Not quite the same as a Magnetar, given that you're not also going to stun them. But I would be fairly surprised if we do not see a hunter in these first three picks. Be that hero allows you to have so much mid-game presence, gives a lot of burden to the supports, because they always have to be picking up uh, sentries, you know, just dust, and really, you know, trying to tank up as well. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, my voice has been pretty bad all day. But, um... There are some there are some other interesting picks to be had, but if we don't see a Sven, a Bounty Hunter, and a Jakiro in these first three picks, I will probably eat a shoe. <laughs> sure enough, yeah. Um, I definitely think they're trying to think about the interaction of giving away a Sven and a Darkseer combined together, especially in the current mm -hmm. aspect of him just getting so much farm early on with an aggressive try lane, and then from there benefiting so much from the vacuum. But they actually can go Sven and Bounty, which two great pickups. They get their number one slot, this carry, taken care of, and their offlaner, the Bounty Hunter, to get the momentum like you were talking about. Now, the real benefit, like you are saying, uh, I would say is a little bit more behind the scenes than just being able to gank up early on. I mean, he's a great <coughs> hero by himself, but the track gold allows your supports to get farmed by every assist that they make, and, of course, makes the enemy uh, pay more and more. Enemy supports have to dish out into sentries and dust and things along those lines just to try to bring you down. But if for every get kill you get, you get that much more of a gold advantage, not just for you, but for your entire team. So that's going to be really, really important as we go along, seeing just more of a gank-oriented lineup going on through. But no solo mids have been picked up just yet, and that can, might have just been changed with the Rubik getting picked up. He is a solid support, but also can be played extremely effectively in that solo mid situation. But base is void. Very interesting to dish out at pick number three. Do you think it would have been banned out, or do you think they could have saved that for later? It might have been banned out because more recently people are looking at ways to go and deal with a BKB Sven. Uh, Enigma and Faceless Void are kind of the you know number one picks, and I think the reason that Faceless Void is kind of being favored is that normally when we see a Sven, we also end up seeing an aggressive tri lane, and what that means is if you have an Enigma in woods and a dual lane, you're in a lot of trouble. So even though Black Hole you know is really good against a BKB Sven, the lanes that Enigma uh, uh, sets up are not actually that great against a Sven. So that Chronosphere is going to be, you know, one of the few things that is going to be able to you know, kind of slow down that Sven when he is in that, uh, when he is god strengthened up. Also, it goes and synchronizes, uh, synergizes really well with the Jakiro. And since they've picked up a Rubik, I doubt we'll be seeing any, um, any sort of big ultimate from the other side. It's protecting the Faceless Void. And, you know, Rubik, if a Rubik manages to steal Track or steal Stormbolt or any of Darkseer's spells, it's going to be pretty good for them. I really like that pickup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely think the Rubik is pretty solid, but how do you feel about them not having drafted up the Darkseer for themselves? Obviously, would be a very, very effective third pick for Dyer's lineup. Uh, I'm assuming level 3 Jakiro's team lineup must have realized that. Do you feel that that was a bit of a mistake, handing over the Darkseer with the vacuum into Stormhammer and then the cleave up from Sven? Uh, or do you think they just really need to secure their lanes and kind of draft for themselves rather than just constantly worrying about the counter picks? Yeah, I, you know... It's tricky to say, but if they have a strategy that depends on having Faceless Void as their carry, and they really are comfortable playing Faceless Void against a Sven, you should go and pick him up. Because if if they set up to have a Faceless Void as carry, and then don't get him, you're just going to lose the game. But, you know, Darkseer, it makes Sven better, but it's not going to go and change the way the game plays out, which a Faceless Void pick will do, if you understand what I'm trying to say here. Like, Faceless Void is a much bigger game changer than Darkseer. Darkseer just makes Sven better. Sure enough, Faceless sure Void means you can play the game in a completely different way. Very, very true. I uh, especially like the Chronosphere plus Macro Power combination. Those two spells mm -hmm. just add a lot of damage over time inside that bubble, and so hopefully they can line those up pretty effectively there. And of course, yeah, Ruby can still steal Vacuum or Track or Stormhammer and deliver a lot of damage in the team fights as well. So we'll have to see how good that Ruby player is and if he's going to be opting 
for the solo middle role, or if he's just going to be supporting it up. One way or another, though, he's definitely going to hopefully get some really big spell steals out and try to gain some momentum back for their team. So it's a really good, solid pickup. Um, but the Tidehunter and Queen of Pain bands coming out, um, both from very, very different sides of the spectrum as far as roles go. But both of them can technically go on the offlane. Uh, Tidehunter and offlane isn't the most uncommon thing. Uh, ergo, Hannah Montana complexity style. But yeah, uh, Queen of Pain blinks around. She has potential in middle and in the offlane. So one way or another, she's going to be off the board. Same with the Windrunner. Um, but how about uh, Radiant Spans? Yeah, I think that um, basically they're going and trying to go and mitigate that spin a bit. Sven plus Leshrac is, you know, it guarantees about four seconds worth of being stunned, and then you can go really transition into a tower bush very easily. Um, the Shadow Demon just kind of gives your entire team time to catch up, and plus that uh, that damage amplification makes Sven an actual nightmare in the lane. So I think these are pretty good bands. They're kind of foreseeing that this Sven's going to get aggressively dry land, and getting rid of the supports that will help them the, uh, that are strongest in an aggressive dry lane. So right now, you know, what kind of supports are left? Maybe we'll see Alina. We might be see, you know, a Crystal Maiden. But those aren't exactly the supports you want in a long lane because they do want more levels than, for example, uh, Shadow Demon or Leshrac. Sure enough, sure enough. So um, Level 3 Jakiro is the name of the team. They did first pick out the Jakiro. Do you think that he's going to be playing a very hard supportive role, um, moving on around, doing a lot of stacking and pulling type things for a defensive trial lane for the face of the Void? Or uh, is it going to actually be more prominent and, like, and try to get some more action with a macro pyre and those sorts of things, and that's an interesting pickup, the gyrocopter. So, two things. Yeah, that, yeah, that's actually super interesting. Well, on the note of the gyrocopter, you got to be wondering where they're going to lane him, and I would be, uh, I'd be pretty surprised if we didn't see him mid in the situation. Otherwise, there could be a dual lane with the Rubik and Faceless Void, and put the gyro Jakiro in the safe lane. But I'm not exactly sure how good a two to one would be in this game, given that you know if you end up having the tri lane match against your dual lane, you'll be in trouble. So mm -hmm. we're probably going to see a gyrocopter mid, but uh, you know it synergizes well with the Faceless Void and the Jakiro, and then we have the Lina pickup, and that's pretty. This is getting pretty dicey because uh, Gyrocopter, while he has great agility gain, he does need to tank up a bit. So we're probably going to be seeing a pretty fast BKB on the Gyrocopter to go and deal with the Sven and deal with Elena. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how safe he'll be because, you know, Gyrocopter, his skill set wants him to do two completely different things, you know? The way Flat Cannon and his edge growth scales, he wants to be a super hard carry, but the rest of his skills do a tremendous amount of damage in the early game and require him to be up close. So itemizing on him is always a bit of a struggle, but, you know, maybe we'll see some sort of Django. This does mean that the Rubik's going to be a, a probably in support. Hmm, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And that's... They're going to need it, to be honest, because otherwise they're not going to be able to deal with a Sven Lina plus one. Mm -hmm. From what I'm telling, they're trying to reinforce all lanes. They're trying to make sure that... Uh, you were talking about 2-1-2, two, 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 and I don't think that's going to be their best option, just based mm -hmm. on the fact that their ma main objective here is to win two out of the three lanes. If they can get a couple lanes down, they can transition into a generally solid mid-game where they can get a decent amount of farm on their carries, the Pace of and Gyrocopter, and kind of go from there. And you definitely need some durability on the Gyro, for example. And they're going to go with the Invoker, which is a really weird and kind of throws off exactly what I was about to say. I was about yeah. to say like they could go gyrocopter solo mid, have Jakiro do some stacking and pulling on the creep easy camp in middle lane, and kind of mm -hmm. pull that around to uh, kind of negate whoever goes for the solo mid. Um, mm -hmm. But right now, drafting against that Maestro picks up the Nature's Prophet, which will allow them to just pretty much go wherever they want. If he's not getting any farm, any creeps on middle lane, he can just jump down somewhere else, push down a tower. So it's really difficult to mobilize your supports uh, for the rating team set up there. And along mm -hmm. with that, the Invoker is now another hero that kind of needs that much more support. Baby, uh, not necessarily being babysat. He can handle his own with enough claws, but um, it definitely makes it a little bit awkward who they're going to be setting on the top lane specifically. Yeah, this is actually pretty strange. It looks like this Invoker is going for um, mid, just, you know, fast claws that Blades of Attack start. But I'm curious to see how they're going to try to finish up these lanes. Because you can't, you know, Faceless Void isn't one of those heroes that you know, will fare fairly well, you know, even with low amounts of farm. If they're danger lane in the Gyrocopter, I'm also a little bit suspicious of that. But, again, you know, they just might be trying to next level it. Imagining that the uh, Dire is going to be going for an aggressive tri lane, and, you know, Gyrocopter will do fine 1v1 top. It's just a, in a pretty dangerous position. Yeah, that's going to be very interesting. But, yeah, I definitely agree with your sentiment on the fact that they uh, made the assumption that there was going to be an aggressive tri lane, and with that, 
they would be able to do the 1v1, but that's not exactly what they seem to be grouping up for right now. They have the Rubik and the Jakira going on through with the Gyrocopter go up on the top lane. But they're just going to be going 3 versus 1 up against the Darkseer, who, to be honest, as soon as the Telekinesis and Li the uh, Ice Path, which are both going to be low ranks early on, uh, go on <laughs> through, there's not too much uh, stopping the Darkseer from just surging on away, at least in the jungle, to tank up the homing missile that will be forthcoming. But they're actually looking at running a dual mid on the Dire, which might be extremely effective in destroying this Invoker, as not only has he set up some quads, so he will have a hard time last hitting, but um, going up against a double stun may be very, very dangerous for him. Yeah, I think when the, they last picked that Furion, it kind of threw off the Radiant, and they were, exp you know, they thought that maybe they would just be jungle gangs, but this setup, you know, I feel very much favors the Dire, because they have, you know, three, la like, both their top and their bot are going to do fine with you know minimal amounts of farm. These are two very capable solo heroes. They're in the, they have a, an extra source of experience coming out of the woods from that Nature's Prophet, and mid should be winning handily. So I'd be you know fairly surprised to see if they lose the lanes. It does. What comes down to is how well is this a faceless boy going to farm? How well is this uh, gyrocopter going to farm? And is this invoker going to be able to handle himself? It seems like Ru Rubik is rotating mid, and that might be enough to you know at least allow him to get some decent experience in farm. Sure enough, if they do the mid pull that we we're talking about, that might help them out a lot. But one thing is for sure that there's really not going to be very much room control on level three Jakiro's lineup in general. And Voker doesn't isn't too reliant on them. But Lena and Sven, it's just too dangerous to contest those runes early on, and that's a pretty valuable resource. I mean, if you get a good invisibility haste or double damage, you can really sh uh, shift things up and try to get some early kills in your favor, so that's something they're going to have to watch out for. And right now is Invoker's weakest point. He is only level 1, not a single spell to his name. He's about to hit level 2, and that'll give him a cold snap at the very least, but beyond that, not too much to add on to it. Yeah, I think um, they are doing, uh, Radiant is doing the right thing top lane and going and trying to push as aggressively as possible, forcing that Furion to get out of the woods. And, you know, they're not going to get this tower anytime soon. Ion Chill and Shreans are going to be enough to stop that. But they are pressuring it, and they're forcing this Furion to do something rather than just sit in woods and maybe, you know, get that fast Midas, get that fast mech, whatever he wants. Any sort of pressure they can go and put on with this top lane is going to be, uh, you know, both good and absolutely necessary because mid lane is going to be having a very, very hard time. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about this 1v1 Faceless Void versus Bounty Hunter? It's a little bit uh, weird, but I honestly don't think the Faceless Void will have too much issue getting at least a stable level of farm against, up against them. Yeah, I think that Faceless Void should actually do like really well this lane, especially considering he started out with that poor man shield. He's got pretty good base damage, and, you know, he's just not afraid of the Bounty Hunter. Odds are against him actually dying. And if you look at it, it shows in his farm, he's already 10 and 6, 2 minutes in. Mm-hmm. So that's rather effective there, and I mean, they pooled him some regeneration, so he was able to get that fast poor man shield branch going on through, so his base damage is out through the roof, actually almost 20, yeah, like 17 above the bounty hunters, so I do not have helps with the last hits, but otherwise, face of void shouldn't get de out denied too hard. Yeah. One problem is this gyrocopter is getting, you know, fairly shut down. Looks like he's just going to go with Bassy Ring, get just a kill of treads, and then... Again, I think a BKB is going to be pretty necessary this game. But with those items, you know, we've seen gyrocopters do a surprising amount of damage just via rocket barrage and homing missile. So I think they've done the right thing, giving uh, Void this more protected lane and just allowing, you know, kind of letting their gyrocopter use his spells instead of just actual damage. Mm -hmm. Now, Sven has picked up a bottle. Uh, I think that means he's going to be trying to roam around a little bit more. Um, obviously, he wants to just get a uh, stable farm early on, and why not? Up against the Invoker, no problem. But with these runes, get the regeneration. You can you know, cast a bunch more spells than you normally would be able to uh, over time. And with that, you can not only put a lot of pressure on the mid, but also possibly gank up on the top, which is surprisingly gankable. I mean, you look at uh, their ward coverage right now. They don't really have mid -lane. anything. Uh, they're just kind of harassing. Yep, just forcing him back. The Quas Regeneration Rank 2 will provide him for, um, well, 14 with the Tango, but it's going to give him 6 Regeneration uh, bonus at base. Um, but still, those spells co constantly coming on out will put out a lot of pressure there. Nice Cold Snap to harass from Sundown, but again, he has that Regen run, so at 140 mana, he'll pop up one more Storm Hammer and be good to go with full health and mana bar. But yeah, like I was saying, uh, the top lane very gankable, no wards to really protect them, Viridian using a lot of mana just to try to push aggressively, and yes, that has forced the Nature Prophet out, but he still has that Sprout, and the Darkseer, of course, has a lot of presence with that Iron Shell as well, so if they wanted to transition in with a Sven or Lena up top, could do a lot with it, but right now they're just trying to shut down the pulling action going on. 
Yeah, I think the you know the biggest loser in the radiant lineup right now is this uh, Rubik, who's just having a terrible time, not yet hitting level two. And you know a Rubik without level six, it just isn't the same hero. Luckily, telekinesis and fade bolt are you know fine spells even at lower levels. But I am kind of worried to see if he's going to be able to pick up that kind of that farm that he so desperately requires in the mid game. One uh, thing to note is, while, you know, Sven certainly can use the extra mana oh, coming from lane, that actually. bottom. actually. Viridian gets sprouted oh. in, doesn't have any way of breaking on through, so he will be the first bug around down to a really low life, and he does actually drop down to the ice path as well. And now Sven has popped off a haste rune in mid lane, but it doesn't look like anything's going to come of that. No, actually what happened was he just killed the Rubik in woods. They went and caught him trying oh. to stack that small camp, and, you know, stun, Lena stun, he was actually dead. And that's what happens when you have a level 1 Rubik who's sitting at 511 health against the Sven and Lena, who are both around level 4 now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty rough. Most well, certainly will do it, but that, that those two kills up on the top lane allow the Major Prophet and Darkseid to push down on this tower extremely quickly. Major Prophet last hitting that for a lot of gold and actually could get a Midas for himself, and, uh, no doubt. Actually, he, despite the fact that he wasn't able to jungle, just with those two quick early kills, getting the first blood for himself and that tier 1 tower, he actually has the Midas. Now, Darkseid will get caught out a little bit by the uh, Ice Path along with the homing missile, but won't do too much to uh, disrupt his farm as he's going along controlling the lane pretty well with that tower already knocked down so that's actually two lanes fully controlled by uh, hello this is dog and that's not where they want to be right now faces void is pretty much their only hope at trying to secure a mid to late game win yeah I mean this is looking quite grim for um, not this is this is dog on radiant and uh, mm -hmm. uh, no this is dog. level 3 yeah. hero is radiant and then hello this right. is dog is dire yeah, that NTL is throwing me off a bit but um I, uh, you know, this does look really bad for Radiant, you know, there's no way around that, but I think it's not this insurmountable advantage yet. They just need to go and try to write out the Bounty Hunter, because that's going to be the next stage of the game that's coming in, because this Bounty Hunter already roaming, already level 6. If they can go and mitigate the amount of damage this Bounty Hunter is about to, you know, try and do... Mm -hmm. they have a chance because they have the faces void to go and bring them okay. back in the late game. But that level 1 but Rubik, man, he can telekinesis up, but that's really all he's got going for him. <laughs> he couldn't even get the tele off because of fog, and now he's tracked up. They have full vision on him. Heck, with a war cry, I think they might even be able to dive. The, the cold snap, of course, will uh, make them a little bit more concerned about that. But now Bounty Hunter, in between the two towers, knows the positioning so that he won't be revealed out. And now with that track, uh, she's looking for Light Strike, right? Will not land that, but forcing him back. Just the Dragon Slave forcing him off the tower. Now Bounty Hunter uh, wants to go for him here. But nice Telekinesis and the uh, Ice Path and the Cold Snap will be going on, down on him as well. And with the TP in from Viridian, they might get a kill for free, but no. He goes south and in, while invisible, the Shadow Walk had just expired after he went out of the fog. So he actually will survive on out of that. And ballsy play, and they weren't able to pick off that level 1 Rubik for that big track kill. But nevertheless, at least he didn't. He got out alive from all those TPs forced in. Uh, Gyrocopter was really not getting anything out of it at the time. Now Cheetah, now level 4. Kind of making their name a bit of a misnomer. What's up, guys? But anyways, uh, he's <laughs> farming up on the easy camp here and burning them down pretty effectively with the uh, liquid fire as well as the ice path. Yeah, what's got me noticed during all this, this void's just been farming, and he's, you know, about, what, 20, uh, 2200 gold away from that battle fury if he decides to go for it. He's looking for a pretty well-timed 12, 13-minute battle fury. So there, there is a clock on Dire. So if they go and, you know, keep missing their kills, they're going to have a problem coming into the late game. Again, you're right. This Rubik, it's an issue, but this Invoker hasn't been shut down as hard as you know both you and I expected him. He's picked up face boots, and he looks like he might be. Uh, he's just getting harassed a lot, but he's not dying, and really, that's all that matters right now. Mm -hmm. Very, very true. That Quaz rank three, just putting as much into it as he needs to to make sure his HP will stay up for full. Because so far they've been able to harass him quite a bit, but they haven't been able to drop drop him down fully. But now Midland. tornado goes on through the storm hammer goes across. Actually, bounty hunter finishing the job on the Rubik and then are dropping down the invoker shortly after. And now face the void trying to help out a little bit gets a nice bash off. We're down another bash on Darkseer. Lucky his void on the planet will get another kill out of it. And now looking for Lena pops off the chronosphere has full vision on her with the ice path to do a little bit of extra damage. They will burn her. Down. Down. So double kill for Viridian and one kill for the base of the point, and that's exactly what they need if they want to stay in this game. Yeah, that was actually great because they went and picked off, you know, they they didn't pick off, you know, the Sven, which I think would be the highest priority target right now, given that he's already at 2,000 gold. So let's see if he goes, you know, he's not picked up boots, which is kind of strange, but I think we'll probably see something like, you know, Faces Mask and Madness or something like that. But they picked off three heroes. They lost two in track gold, but, you know, not the most important heroes in the game. So I'm curious to see. Looks like he is going to is gonna bash. Wow, oh double damage, boy. Just gets really...
cl easy clean kill um, on that bounty hunter. Just bounty hunter unlucky not getting that double damage rune just fast enough because the treads obviously giving him a lot more movement speed than the uh, boots of speed. So giving him that opportunity now he's finished his perseverance and is going to be looking for that battle fury in no time at all. But yeah, like you said, Spen's been saving up a lot, actually getting cold snapped up with a homing missile charging upon him, but. I think he'll be alright in general. Uh, they can put out a lot of damage pressure, but he shouldn't take a fall since he does have that war cry available. But nevertheless, um, he has picked up an item and is not sure what treads. it is. Oh, he just went for full treads, okay. So that was yep. 1450 gold spent in that regard. Actually, it's probably a little bit less now that the boots have been nerfed. 1400? But nevertheless. Yeah. Uh, looks like Rubik yeah. is trying to lane now, trying to get a little bit more experience and kind of go from there. But uh, it seems like Bounty Hunter has other plans. That Rubik is just so juicy. It's like a stake on a platter for him. He wants to track that up and get that bonus gold. Because even if it is only a level 3 hero kill, it's still 150 bonus gold if he has that track up. And that's really, really big. And, of course, he might want a little bit of vengeance on his void. A beautiful nature, wrath of nature coming on through with a quick Janata to burn him down. It was not a track kill because he just reactively right-clicked on him. But at least he did get a quick pick off on Pace's Blood, which will allow the net of Tier 1 tower down on bottom. Yeah, I think that was, you know, just a little bit of sloppy play on the part of the faceless void, because I'm not sure what his plan was, just running into an ion shelled Darkseer, and I gotta say that it's kind of, right now, the all, the entire pressure of the game is on this faceless void. Either he gets farmed and they're able to do, go and deal with this, or he doesn't, so he's gonna have to kind of play out of his skin here, and there isn't room for the kind of errors like that right now. Especially when you look at it, this Rubik still has no, you know, plus stats items, he's just gone for sentries, and that's you know that's not what you want on a Rubik. If you're playing Rubik, you would prefer to have Arcanes. You want a Django, perhaps. You want that Force Staff, maybe even a Blink Dagger. Top lane, so. Birdian, caught up in the Sprout. It's trying to bring down Nave as fast as possible. Does pop off the Homing Missile, which might do the trick. And now going 1v1 up against Maester will be able to bring him down. The Trents will not be able to pursue appropriately. Now looking at Nave and seeing if the damage is there. I don't know the rank. It's, it is enough. And it will bring down the Sven in turn. Rank 2, Homing Missile, doing so much damage at that range. Yeah, I mean, that's basically what it comes down to. Gyrocopter, you know, all he has in the kill hub, but just the power of that level 4 uh, rocket barrage and that homing missile, it's enough to go and get two kills. Yeah. If he had uh, b actually gone to the outpost and purchased a TP scroll, I think he could have TP'd out in time just because it takes so long to charge to him. Yeah. But nevertheless, he was taken down. Uh, just uh, underestimated the damage that would come out of it just a little bit. A lot of uh, gyrocopters building just a rank 1 homing missile, um, but not really benefiting too much from the bonus damage, etc. And so he mm -hmm. might have expected that, but one way or another he did get dropped down there. And that, uh, with those kills and that pressure going on through, um, while they were distracted up top, tier two was or tier one mid was taken down by Lean and Bounty Hunter, so that's something at the very least. And an Ion Shield Trent from fa forcing out a time off from the faces of the way, that's kind of funny. Yeah, I think now he's going and develop the appropriate amount of fear for this... Uh Gondar. One interesting thing is this Faceless Void has been doing some really short hops uh, using his time walk, and I'm, you know, that actually might be intentional in trying to bait the other team to think he has a lower level of uh, time walk than he actually does. So when it comes down to it, he can go for a very big leap. I, uh, if that's the case, you know, I really commend him because that's some pretty next level play. Sure and, enough, sure enough. You know, I'm always for that. It's all about the mind games, man. All about the mind games. But speaking of. Smoke coming on through, walking, going to be walking right past the Radiant Wards that are in the middle of the jungle, so they might think that it's just a Nature's Prophet's farming by himself. They want to gank up on that, and they'll be like, okay, well, that's free uh, Lambda Slaughter, and then here it comes on through. Now they're looking for Janata to set up the Light Shark right, but she is Telekinesis up for the time being. The track does a nice little bit of damage and allows them to pursue, but the Chronosphere comes on through, which will burn down indeed. So Crawl goes down onto the Bounty Hunter. He will be dropping extremely low, but nice action coming out from Lena as well. Uh, Jakira pops off the... Macrofire and the ice, but it's not going to work out for them. Instead, it's going to be Maestro auto attack battle up against Invoker, trying to bring him down as fast as possible, but he's running on through with the Wex. Now, Spen has popped off strength, wants to burn somebody down as fast as possible, has that war cry. The Iron Shell goes on through. Just a couple more right clicks is all they need on Viridian, but they're not going to get it. Blocked up by all these trance, all these melee creeps. Cut out in the way. There is a nice TP coming in from Nature Prophet, though, and Maestro will be able to bring him down on the back end with that uh, nice long range teleport. Yeah, I mean, that fight almost went terribly. Lena's ult didn't actually uh, proc on the faces boy, you know, the her stun didn't. He was just running around, but that's the thing, he was running around. With track gold on, uh, with track gold on him, there was no way he could catch up to anyone. That's the problem if you're playing some melee carry against a Gondar. You just really can't afford, you know, you don't get the opportunity to go on auto attack once you're out of Chronosphere. Exactly. So as soon as Chrono ended, that fight turned around a lot. I feel Jakiro could have dropped that Ice Path and Macrofire out a bit sooner, 
and with that could have benefited a lot more from it, but unfortunately did not work out for them, and of course the uh, Face of Void only rank 1 backtrack isn't as survivable as it could be. Now, I don't, I'm not saying that's a bad build, as Time Lock does provide a lot of benefit now in the current sphere if you can get those bashes, getting the double damage out of it. Very, very effective, but all the same, backtrack is kind of essential. Uh, he needs to get a few more levels, try to get towards that level 14 as fast as possible to fill out his skill lineup to survive as best he can. But in the meantime, Nature's Prophet getting so much gold out of Midas, and what does he turn it into? A support item, actually. So he's actually going to get the mechanism uh, through all that money, and that's a 250 heal that they definitely want as they're going to be trying to maintain momentum, pressure, and just keep on ganking, ganking, ganking. Yeah, I've gone and seen things like, sometimes you'll even see a mech into a Midas, but basically I think the thought process there is the Midas, you know, on Furion, it's not just for the gold, right? But because he uh, scales really well if you just give him a ton of experience. And it guarantees that he will go and get items at some point. So, you know, it makes it, it allows him to be a little bit more aggressive on the map, gives him the higher level of Nature's Call, the higher level of Wrath of Nature, and just turns him into a completely different hero. I think for the rest of the game, uh, we're probably just going to keep seeing some uh, support items coming out of him. But, you know, he might also just go... It looks like he's going... Uh, what is this? Orchid. Orchid, right? And that's just going to be really good against this uh, gyrocopter, against a faceless void. Yeah, definitely agree with all that. Um, I mean, uh, obviously a first blood and tier one tower last hit doesn't hurt at all in that okay. regard. But yeah, there is a chronosphere popped off with, and uh, wow, everything! Holy, they just popped off like every spell in the book. Wanted to bring down this dark seer, and Jakira's gonna actually take the kill in the end. But um, yeah, they definitely wanted him dead. Forced the EMP, the macro pyre, ice path. You name it, they dropped it, and they were able to bring him down, but now, looking at top, they don't have as many cooldowns available. Might not even be able to bring down this Maestro, though. They did pop off the time walk. He has slowed up quite a bit. Needs a bash. Actually not even going to get close enough with that track movement speed. Try a nice track onto the face of Void on bottom lane means that face of the... Actually, Sven is going to get caught out a little bit, but pops off a storm hammer and should just be able to walk away, as they don't really have the mana pursue. Again, the Jakira wasted almost his full arsenal of spells on the bottom lane there. Yeah. One thing I'd like to point out, actually, speaking of Midas, is, is that this Faceless Void's build, I feel, could... It's a little bit more late-game oriented, uh, given how much fighting he's looking to do on the map. And I'm not saying he's making a wrong decision by going to all these fights, but Battle Fury is one of those items that, once you buy it, makes a huge difference. But if you're sitting, like, 500 gold away from a Battle Fury, it's just not as effective at all in its component form. I think uh, what might have been better this game if he was looking to be this active was to go for that uh, build Lotus showed off during DreamHack, Fast Midas into Mask of Madness and Lightning Hammer. So that goes and gives you a bit more presence for, um, you know, more gold overall, but in more uh, accessible pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely smaller chunks, it's a bit easier build up. It definitely is more possible to get that at uh, a stage where the game is very aggressive on both ends. But also, mm -hmm. it allows you to do a dish out a heck of a lot of damage with that increased attack speed Maelstrom, and the bash procs going on through, benefiting all, so much from that AS bonus. And then the one thing you just have to watch out for is the 30% damage amplification of Mask of Madness and really just very carefully time when you're going to be using it. It's a great DPS items, but it can also bite you in the ass if you take too much damage while uh, under its effects, especially with your backtrack not maxed out at this stage. And yeah, also just that... Oh, yeah, it looks like he's uh, all kinds of dead. <laughs> but the other thing that you have to notice is like that increased uh, move speed would give him that edge to go and pick up heroes when he's got track on him. And right now, I think that's his biggest problem. Yeah, so Meanwhile, have they been up? Bounty they Hunter actually only has two kills and two assists, so obviously not where he wants to be. Um, is it just they have the Radiant team have been grouping up too much, or uh, they're just not finding the picks and they're kind of mm -hmm. losing that exchange? Yeah, I think they're just, the Radiant team has just, you know, if you still look at these supports, they've just constantly been warning there's a vision on the map, constant sentries, and that's a credit to them, but it is going in, you know, that's not an infinite resource, these supports aren't made of money, and their item level is so far behind than, for example, the Lino or the Furion, that eventually it's going to catch up with them, so the Bounty Hunter's not dying. The Darkseer almost has a pipe. These next couple fights are just going to get worse and worse for the Radiant lineup, and it's just going to come down to, you know, how good is the Tornado going to be, how good is the Void Ult going to be, if they're going to be able to chain it up with Gyro and the Mac Pyre, because otherwise the risk the support's taking by not, you know, buying a single Bracer in favor of just getting more and more wards, if that doesn't pay off, they're going to just lose the game in the next 10 to 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Smoke has been popped off on both teams. The Dire was just actually Lena and... 
the bounty hunter, not really anything coming out of that. But now we have all five members of uh, level 3 Jakiro looking to gank up on Sven. They see him farming the creeps up. They want to get some long range initiation. Starting off with that time walk. Going on through with the corner sphere. Lena walks right on into it. So that's definitely a Sven kill, but may also be Lena. Yeah, with the, with the call down, with the macro fire. Viridian gets both those kills. I don't know why she decided to check out what was going on over there in the big shiny blue bubble, but it definitely cost her her life there. Yeah, it looks like they're going to lose bot tower to this, but I'm not sure they could go and defend it with, against five anyway, so isn't the worst thing. If they go and pick up top tower, if, for example, you know, the void manages to blast it, if the gyro manages to blast it, I say this is a pretty huge win in their favor. Mm -hmm. Now Dark Sirius popping, uh, teleporting on up. They could bring him down easily. That's a big mistake in my mind right there. And though uh, he does get a nice vacuum and wall of replica going on through, I don't think it's going to be enough. Even the tower won't be able to finish anybody off now. Lena coming on in on the back end. One by one they come. Uh, now the uh, backup is here with Nature's Prophet and Bounty Hunter trying to bring down the face of Void at the very least. Try to get something out of this as they have lost two heroes and a lot of damage pressure on the tower. TPs have been exhausted, but it looks like nobody's going to fall. Is Shurkin going to come out on the face of Void? No, he was behind the trees. He is going to be perfectly fine. And Invoker is the only one that will drop down. We do have a quick disconnect coming out of Ratchaw. Yeah. <coughs> so that, you know, they did defend the tower, however, and I feel like... Um, even though they lost the darks here in the process, it was probably for the best because that's just 200 gold that you're denying from you know this Takira and this Rubik who are already really poor. If you just go and keep both of these at you know sub 1,000 HP, you're going to have a, a much easier time with your Gondar. Sure enough. So um, interesting is that the Nature Prophet, yeah, he is the one that has wor been working on that Orchid, and I'm not sure how he wants to use it. If he wants to try to catch out the gyrocopter without him popping off any of his defensive abilities like the call down in the barrage or if he's just trying to single out like the fact that Rubik and Invoker are so reliant on the spellcasters as well as Jakiro uh, they just really want to be casting 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 trying to get some stuns out get some AoE damage out that kind of thing um, and it's just I don't know if he's just trying to get it as a good general item or if he has a very specific intent in mind like muting the backtrack on the face of void and trying to stop his time walks yeah, I mean, it might just be that, you know, if they can go and, like, this void's jumping in and then immediately uh, chronoing, right? So if you're actually able to go and catch him before chrono, it's, there's not a huge window of time for it, but it's going to completely turn the fight around. Also, I think just the damage amplification in uh, conjunction with Sven, with Lena, just the amount of damage on the dire team, it's a fine item, and it gives him some bit more right-click to contribute in team fights. Alright, Rubik had reconnected, so uh, they... Brown went AFK. Oh, okay. Got it, got it. So that'll be coming back in. Lena has been doing a pretty good job thus far, just sending out the Lagunas exactly where they need to be. Um, the Light Strike Rays haven't all been there, but any ones that are set up by the Stormbolt haven't been too much difficulty for her at all. But Sven now has that Drum of Endurance. Combining that charge with the Warcry allows them to have a great amount of initiation, especially when you add in the track movement speed, speaking of which was a uh, track kill on the Invoker. Didn't notice that until just now, based on the cooldown, but... Uh, yeah, the movement speed from the track, the movement speed from Warcry, and the uh, Drums of Endurance, Django. Uh, do you think that that range of initiation will allow them to do a lot more, assuming they can prevent the Chronosphere? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yes. I mean, the fact that they're just running faster than the other team is going to really help them in chasing. The, their spells also are just generally uh, pretty low cooldown. If the, the problem is they might be running into an ice bath, I'm not sure how much I agree with this Sven picking up the drums, given that the boundary order has a pair, because he needs a BKB fairly badly, just so he can go and walk through the tornadoes and the ice bats that the Radiant team's going to be throwing at him. So, it might be a bit of wasted gold. The charges are always good, I'm not going to deny that, but I feel like, you know, that's 1900 gold that could have been put to use, because that would have been a finished BKB. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, uh, maybe a little bit of miscommunication on their part, but I mean, there are benefits to having multiple. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's a good item in the sense that it gives a lot to all stats, helps out with his mana issues. You know, he does that bottle of magic wand, which uh, helps him out too in that regard as well. But uh, one thing, I, yeah, I would like to say is that Sven, being a number one, he definitely wants to get some big, big damage items. Look at that Day Dallas, the BKB Mask of Madness. I mean, that's the. Uh, spend that we know and fear so along with that the drum only gives them so much especially with scaling with god's strength only giving them 18 um, in that regard for the base damage and then giving a little bit more with the plus three and of course attack speed attack speed very important on sven trying to get that down but mask of madness is generally the item of choice to bring that uh, base attack time down really quickly 
Uh, and yeah, I mean, I feel like he's just not performed as well considering that he had that mid lane and free farm. They've gone and uh, this isn't due to like any poor play on his part, but Radiant Team has been five manning so often that he's been forced to go to fights, which I'm sure he'd rather not go to. But in the meantime, you know, he's going to have to deal with the fact that he's farming against a Void who has his Battle Fury and is just going to be running around the map trying to get as much gold as possible. So it puts him in a slightly difficult position. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, as far as farming routes for Faces Void, the last game, which I don't know if you tuned in for, but either way, the Faces Void was able to pick up a Midas and a Battle Fury, which obviously gives him plenty of potential for GPM, but it was a lot later in the game uh, to stage, uh, at least in the stage of the game. I think time-wise it was all right, but as far as the stage of the game, uh, all the Tier 2s were down and there was aggressive warding from the enemy team. He really didn't have much opportunity to really flash farm any creep waves or do that. Uh, based on the current position, the towers, the tier 2s that are currently up, the ward positioning of the Dire, do you think Faces Void is going to be able to use his Battle Fury as he intends to and try to get up on that GPM chart higher than Niche Profit? Um, it's going to be pretty interesting. I think that uh, what Faces Void is going to be doing is to go farm out bot lane, farm the three camps, and as long as he has these wards that are currently up and uh, they do a good job counter warding, he's going to be fairly safe doing that, so he's going to be happy as a clan until he gets ganked. That's always the problem, right? If this Furion comes down, you know, plus a Gondar, they're going to have a huge amount of trouble just going... This Faces Void is going to have a huge amount of trouble coming out alive, given that this Furion is, you know, he's been about, what, a thousand gold away from finishing Orchid. So I think that's his big problem, and they're just going to have to play around that. They're in a bad position. I don't think uh, uh, we can deny that, and... I'm not sure how they're going to get out of this because the entire time that this game's been going on, you know, Pipe's now up on Darkseer, and we'll see. Maybe he'll go pick up an Ags. Maybe he'll just go and, you know, find some Shivas or something. And if they kind of draw this game out, Void is going to be, you know, the number one problem for the Radiant because if you have a Gyrocopter illusion, if you have a Void illusion hitting you along with trying to dodge the Storm Hammers and uh, Light Strike Arrays, what's this, you know, 600 HP uh, Rubik going to do? But yeah, but yeah. Um, so I definitely think that they need to get a little bit more momentum from the, their supports. I mean, like we've been talking about all game long, uh, the Rubik was under leveled for an extensive period of time. Uh, he's, I mean, looking at Jakira and Rubik's uh, experience per minute, 205 and 141 is just by far the bottom of the charts. Um, and then, uh, yeah, net worth is kind of the same story. You Not even a 1,000 for Rubik. He has boots and then full consumables and 509 gold to spare. It's just like he is warding so aggressively, but that doesn't really give him any durability. If he even has a chance of, if this game goes late, um, getting the null field up, he's not going to have the durability to really keep that for his team as an aura. He's not going to be in the fight really prevalent up in the front lines. He's just going to be in the back, throwing out tracks, throwing out stuns, whatever. But he's really not going to be able to be in the fray like a you know, solo mid dominating Rubik would be. So there's it's kind of like the two sides of the coin. You can do a lot with this hero, but under the circumstances, Jakiro and Rubik are really low on gold, really low on experience, and uh, they can get singled out really hard by some of these uh, very front-loaded damage heroes. Bounty Hunter with his Janata, uh, Lena with the Laguna Blade, and her just full comp component of spells. Uh, it's just going to be very difficult to deal with. So, um, well, I don't know. It's just their their experience is low, their gold is low, and. Uh, even if Faces Void does get a full item set, does get a couple more major items, um, they're still going up against a Nature's Prophet, Bounty Hunter, Sven, and of course Darkseer, who whenever the stronger you are, the stronger his illusions get. Yep. And with that, I just I think that if there's not going to be some big macro powers coming out, and they, if Jakira doesn't hit level 11 anytime soon, it's going to be harder and harder for them to defend this and turtle this up if they want to push, starting with Roshan. Yeah, I think, but one thing to be, to be said is, they're doing okay on levels. Besides the Rubik, who is, you know, sitting at a sad level 7, they're going, you know, what's he compared to? We can compare the, the level 7 and 8 to the level, you know, 10 and 9 from the Lena and the Bounty Hunter. I'm kind of surprised that the experience advantage hasn't, you know, really swung in the Dire's favor. But it seems that most both teams are just kind of running around, you know, trying to catch the other, trying to have a good engagement. And in these fights, Chronosphere is really... Uh, come out and, you know, between Chronosphere and the, you know, the Invoker's range of spells, and I think it's really important to go and credit this Invoker for landing, you know, a pretty clutch tornado is always cold snapping the right target, 
But with that in team fights, they're actually ahead on kills, and that you know that's the biggest way to go and deal with the Gondar is just not to crumple up and die and you know feed him like a god like. They're losing a bunch of towers though, and it's kind of you're when you give up a Furion. Not that you know he's a huge pick these days, but you're kind of allowing that to happen. There's not many ways you can contest that against a Furion. So the game's going poorly, but it's about as well as you can hope, given the lane setup and uh, given the fact that you picked a void. Very true, very true. So that's just something to keep in mind is they are staying relatively on par with the gold graph. I mean, it could be a lot worse. The kills are still there, and I'm not sure if track has been stolen once. I mean, Rubik's only been level 7, level 6, level 7 for a very short period of time, so I doubt it. But just at the gold graph right now, they're not even down 8,000. And going up against a Furion with that much pushing power and going up against the Bounty Hunter with that track gold bonus, they're not out of it. They definitely have some potential there, but they're very, very reliant on this face of Void, getting some real farm, getting some amazing chronos in a defensive position, and allowing, giving, using that as an opportunity for Jaro and the Jakiro to both unleash their full arsenal of spells there. Um, and I definitely, I'm curious about who has an advantage if they go for the Roche control. Okay, so we do have at least one person back, but uh, of course we did have a couple of people go to the restroom, so it'll probably be about 30 more seconds, I would presume, but uh, let's make sure we have both, oh, okay, they're just going I for it. So. Yep. So anyways, I was going to say, um, as far as Roche control, uh, the Dark Seer wall, the vacuum into the wall, and the stuns coming at this AoE from Sven, as well as Lena, I figured that's a pretty powerful uh, combination of spells, but you can't count out the Chronosphere and the Call Down, as well as the Macro Pyre, but all those spells are really, really powerful too. Yeah, I mean, it, again, it just comes down to, you know, Radiant has to have some really good team fights and let this Void farm. Are they going to be able to do it? I don't know, but they have good wards as, you know... Faces Void's been farming fairly well, and he's got the Battle Fury to accelerate that. So if he goes and is able to get up, you know, maybe one, two more big items, that'd be pretty good. It looks like they are going to go, uh, rather, Dyer's going to go for that Roche right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're looking for it here. They bottle up the Haste Rune. They have that available, and they pop off a Sentry Ward. Not exactly sure what that's going to do there, but immediately the Sun Strike comes on out. That Invoker doesn't want to risk that to chance, but he may have no choice involved with the God Strength pop. That's just so much damage coming out into this Roshan. He's already dropped down to 2,000 HP. And in a moment's time, that will be the Agency Mortal on the Sven, and it's going to be very difficult uh, to contest that 5v6. Yeah, I mean, you know, again, the thing is, the one, you know, saving grace is that the Sven doesn't have any huge items yet. It looks like with this stack camp, he's going to, you know, be that much closer to his BKB, which I would guess at this point in the game would be the next big item. If you want to mask a man, he could have uh, picked it up by now, and there he is, the Mitchell Hammer, there is the Ogre Club. So b if they're dealing with a BKB Aegis Sven, I'm not sure how the Radiant are going to go and handle it. Especially, you know, that uh, with a finished Orchid up on the uh, Nature's Profit. Jungles are pretty big engaged. I see them going on into their jungle. They're going to pick off Lena from behind. Uh, interesting Tornado EMP usage, but with the Ice Path, that definitely will make sure that they bring her down at the very least. Now trying to flank up on the uh, remainder that are just running for their lives. And I think they have enough mobility. We were talking about drums. We were talking about Warcry. They have a large amount of movement speed, and they were just able to get on out of there with Maestro just transitioning towards pushing up on the Tier 2 top. So um, that could have been a lot better, in my mind, for Level 3 Jakir. If they had initiated just a little bit earlier, they would have at least caught two people out. But mm -hmm. uh, they didn't cost them any spells, and technically it's a win. But I don't think it makes up for losing the Aegis the Immortal already. And now a Janata going out on Verdi, and a nice track going out on Invoker. Interesting splitting that decision, but, you know, with the vacuum going on through, as well, actually, that's the wall, yeah, well, the wall of the Dire pulling on Viridian and the Invoker on into it, so Viridian is in a really sore spot, will get dropped down here, so that's going to be two kills uh, for them, and that's got at least one track kill, so that's going to benefit them quite a bit, but it did cost them the wall of Rokuko, which is a decent cool then at 100 seconds. Yeah, one thing I really like to see, though, from Dire is that they are very aggressively defending all of their towers. They do not want to give any small advantage over to the Radiant side. And, you know, while they, you know, it, it, I've seen a situation where they had a chance to go and put some more pressure on a Tier 2, but they immediately teleported to the top tower and just, like, prevented it even from going into deny range. So I think that commitment to go and keeping the Radiant down is, you know, it's going to serve them really well towards the mid-game. Yeah, it's kind of a, I mean, Dota is definitely a momentum-based game, and if you give them an inch, they will take a mile. So keeping up those Tier 1s, not only great for the fact that it will uh, limit the amount of gold income that 
of L3J has been t picking up thus far, but also very good for just uh, mobility. You have the TPs, you can go to the front lines of any engagement, get right back in the fray, and Nature Prophet, uh, signature of that with his teleportation, can kind of buy back into it and jump on through. But nice track seal from Rubik might actually turn the tides a little bit. Huge, huge tornado coming through with the uh, Chronosphere to catch up three. Lysor Gray will delay Face of Floyd's damage, but at least they pop off the Aegis Mortar from Sven. Pipe does pop, and they are fleeing, but they're all full of life. I'm uh, not sure if they want to engage on this or just focus on the Sven. Sven now trying to turn around, but he has Cold Snap on him. Now he's vacuum coming on through, but Sven does not take advantage of that. Now gets surged up, looking to bring down the Face of Void, but and just not going to be able to engage all the way through. It's just too overextended, gets tracked up, and has to fall back for the time being. Uh, and yeah, it's just really nice action, really good turtle play from uh, Jakiro and from Rubik. Uh, just really nice action there, and the Chronosphere really made them think twice now that they don't have the Aegis available. Yeah, I think, you know, just being able to go and steal uh, the track was huge in that fight. They were able to run away, just get a good position, and with the with that fight, you know, they took an Aegis and they didn't lose anything, and that's about as much as you can hope for, except, you know, three kills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that homing missile just going long distance, but with the cold snap underneath it, it's definitely going to guarantee a kill on the Lina there. Now maybe looking for a kill on the Bounty Hunter. Do they still have the track on the Rubik? is the question. He still has it, but he is nowhere nearby. He's dewarding for the time being, so uh, this engage will be without him, and uh, Viridian on a really low life with the Iron Shell, and Janata coming out of a Bounty Hunter. He's definitely going to bring him down. Track kill right there, so that's plenty of gold in his hands, but GX Slim taking a lot of damage as well from the Invoker with that Cold Snap. Will he be able to bring him down? One more auto attack should do it. It does indeed, but now he will pay the price as he's been sprouted in, orchided up, and dropped down by Nature's Profit. So back and forth all across the board, but um, favorable exchanges for, I, I would say, both sides, but the track kills definitely help for the... Yeah, I mean, and, you know, the Bounty Hunter, after he went and took out that Gyrocopter, was able to get a free kill on the Jakira. That's more track gold. It's a soul kill. Bounty Hunter is now at level 13, and, you know, that's not something you can allow. Luckily, that Faces Void was farming that entire time and picked up a tower, so he's got a decent amount of gold. But, you know, he's orchided up. Let's see. He should be able to time walk out of this. Yeah, yeah it took a lot of damage, but um, I think he even backtracked the orchid effect. But here comes a teleport in with another sprout. He does not have a quelling blade or a tango, so he will sit on through this despite popping the chronosphere. Both, all of them trapped in place. Time Lord, okay, <laughs> master of time, but not so much of the jungle. And he will get knocked out here with a second sprout coming on through. Uh, another track kill for Bounty Hunter. Mega kill straight for him, and his gold must have just completely shot up. Personally, his GPM just flew through the roof, mm. and now he's sitting at 6,800 net worth, which is really, really good. Yeah, I think that was, you know, a really rough spot for it. That face of the void just got a little bit greedy, wanted to farm another camp probably, and just paid for it. And, you know, with Chronosphere down, that gives uh, Dyra a lot more room to be aggressive. It looks like, is that a finished BKB coming in for Sven? I believe it is. It yeah, be. that is Sven's, yeah, that's Sven's BKB. And, you know, I'm not sure um, what the plan's going to be from now on. Because how are you going to go and lock down the Sven if you don't have the Jikiro just spamming spells? Mm -hmm. Now, um, initiating like on it, the Sven is going on with the Stormhammer. The track is up on Birdie, and he will get knocked down before they have any chance for retaliation. And with that BKB, he says, screw Ice Path, screw Macro I'm going to just cleave you down with two hits. Uh, using that God's strength and just delivering so much pain. So two people in the grave, and like you said, faces voids. Ultimate not up for 35 seconds. So this tier two is going to be it melt like butter underneath the away lays of Sven's sword, and so they're going to drop that down really, really quickly. And nice invoker tornado trying to delay the inevitable, but they do get it. Sven gets the last hit on that. That's more gold available to him to get a nice mask of madness or a day Dallas, crystallis, whatever. Um, plenty to work with there. But now they're all going to fall back from that position. Yeah, I would say that Tyre's plan right now is probably, they're just probably going to go chill around, farm the map for four minutes, pick up the next Aegis, and go and try to end the game. And, you know, that seems like a kind of passive way to play. But I think it's going to give the, their, you know, looking at backing up right now, it's going to give them the highest chance of success. And you don't want to go and just, like, feed Void a random Rampage or anything like that. So playing it out, playing a little bit safe, and I'm not sure what Radiant's going to do. Their plan's still the same, you know, get Void farmed, have a great team fight. But with BKB up on Sven, BKB up on Bounty Hunter, it's just getting harder and harder. Yeah, that Yules is it's really good for defensive position, but right now up against the, t the two hard hitters, both have BKBs. All Invoker is going to be able to do with it is uh, Cyclone himself, which uh, is just going to keep him in a bad spot, and in general it's not going to be the utility that he needs. Um, he's looking for, like, Disable, and that is a pretty long-range item, so if you can get it off beforehand, great. You can uh, Yule somebody into an Ice Path, and try to burn them down through that time period, but it's just a very small niche of a pickup that I don't think is going to pay off compared to like a four staff that could have actually pulled you out of a bad spot. 
Yeah, it's just, you know, he's in a pretty bad spot right now because he does, I think what he's going for, if you look at the amount of points he's got in Wexes, he just wants to run around and fight and be as irritating as possible. And, uh, you know, the phase in the Yule has definitely helped with that, but it looks like, oh, it looks like they're getting caught out as well. Yeah, Lena picking up a Tornado EMP, but um, it's going to be actually on the north end. They're going to be looking for the Darkseer, who actually Yules is, gets Yules during the Chronosphere, so he doesn't take as much damage as he should have. Now he does take a fall, but Sven and Bounty Hunter on in the fray. Everybody just trying to deliver as much as possible. I'm actually missing the Sven. Where is he? There he is. Now he jumps on in, gets the Stormhammer on too, and those are going to be guaranteed kills right there. A couple more tracks going on out. The Rubik did steal the Stormhammer, so he will be able to uh, put a little bit of counter pressure out, but Viridian does take a fall in the northern end. Um, and now Bounty Hunter really, really wants to bring down Rubik, and wow, that track damage, that uh, Janata damage, negative armor, plus that base damage, getting the crit up, and now Maestro, with the TP in, gets the Sprout up, and he's going to try to TP out, not going to be an option, and now faces Void, time walking away, he may be the only survivor of this complete massacre, the big up the Darkseer with the faces Void's Chronosphere through that smoke gank, but other than that, nothing really came of it, and now d dueling 1v1, couple of backtracks keeping Faces Void alive and he should survive from it. Uh, even through the Wrath of Nature he does indeed, but it's still very, very uh, high penalty for their attempt to change things around. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty rough. I would like to say that this is the third time that this Faces Void has backtracked Laguna Blade, so this lean has got to be feeling a little bit upset. It's cost him a kill twice, but it doesn't matter at this point, because what are you going to do? This Sven is just going to go and clear it again. Uh, BKB is off cooldown in another 10 seconds. He's picked up Mask of Madness, and, you know, that's basically a Rax waiting to happen. Mm -hmm. And now with Bounty Hunter picking up that Vlad, it's a little bit of extra lifesteal on it. The base damage also improves, and from there, also, the fact of the matter is plus 5 armor, on top of the 16 that you get from Warcry, and they're not necessarily immune to physical damage, but they're taking mm -hmm. a lot less than they should be. And from there, it's going to be very difficult for uh, L3J to do any real damage to the spend once his BKB is active. So, Fearless in that Mask of Madness, and if he can get in the fray, maybe Lena pick up a four staff to assist him like we saw last game, but one way or another, it's just going to be uh, delivering the pain, and he really doesn't have to worry about anything if he has those two actives, the Warcry and the BKB. Yep, and it looks like Furion's gone and like casually picked up a hex as well. So he's, you know, there is if they go and fight before um, this faceless goes and picks up his BKB, he's going to be pretty rough. And you know, even if he does, faceless void isn't doing like enough damage that he really requires people to focus him down. After um, after Chrono's over, everyone can just run away with that bonus track speed, with the bonus Django speed. And you know, even though uh, it's kind of strange to go and see two Django's, like it's not uh, rather strange, but it's not very efficient to see two Django's in the same game. But they have four charges between the two of them. The Faces Void's going to have a real rough time going and actually catching anyone. Okay, so they j just walked into the middle of their jungle, smoked up, ready for a big gank, and then suddenly they lose all their smoke to the Bounty Hunter, who was just sitting in biz. The Sentry came out too late, so they weren't able to do too much. Now the Tornado EMP goes on through, but with BKB, plenty of movement speed. Won't give two hoots about the homing missile. And Sid watched to bring down Gyrocopter. Uh, Nature Prophet getting the kill on that, but at least a nice Great Faces Void ultimate being able to chrono down and try to put a lot of damage pressure out. Buy that coming out from Nature Prophet. He'll be back in the fray, but look at this damage coming out of the spend. Crystallis is up. He, like, two-shot that Rubik, and now he's going to be looking for the Invoker, who no he has a TV scroll, but knows he can't do anything with it. So double kills for Fen. Now they're going to be looking for Cheetah, and Bounty Hunter, if he can get that Janata off, should be actually able to set them up for some kills. Yeah, the Ice Path goes on through, so he does get stunned up by that, but one more surge from the Dark Darkseer will make sure of it. No vacuum is enough. Chop him on down. Bounty Hunter, level 17 on a monster kill streak, and they're going to be pushing in for the bottom t uh, Tier 3, and then the Racks. Yeah, just not much to do at this point. This man just, you know was able to go and get the... Once he got the BKB, it just became pretty much impossible. They didn't have enough farm on the faces, but they didn't have enough farm on the Invoker at that point. I uh, I think this is going to be a Rax, and that's probably going to be the game. It might be uh, a couple pairs with the fact that Nature Prophet can teleport up to the top lane. The tier 3 is already down there. The Fortification is on cooldown. I think Nature Prophet will, doesn't want a team fight. If he just wants to go for the Rax up top, they can actually manage that. Sheepstick coming out, just trying to put a little pressure on Viridian. Does actually sprout him up too, and Orchid going down on Rubik, as well as some nice action from the... Uh, the wall of replica, the dragon slave going on through. I mean, a lot of damage going across, and they just have to keep on falling back. Bounty Hunter does get caught out for the time being. He has that BKB. He does get the chance to use it, even through the cold snap and the meteor falling right on his head. 
he is, becomes immune and just walks away at half health. So we are able to bring down the range in the melee. Meanwhile, the top racks are taking some damage from that siege creep up there. The fight resumes. Uh, Cheetah actually gets bursted down immediately by that Laguna Blade. No chance at all, and they just can't fight in this beautiful position of that wall of replica. They can't go and re-fortify their uh, tier 3 on bottom, but they'd have to go all the way around, and that would be a complete waste of time. And now Good Game will play his call. They're going to take down the Faceless Void and go go next, because they have oh. taken down level 3 Jakiro in a very convincing win. We'll look at that gold graph one more time, but wow, good game. Yeah, just a really good game from... Um uh, both Radiant and Nara. I think Radiant played it, you know, pretty riskily. They went and kept the supports really low and just kind of bet it all on the Faceless Void. And Faceless, you know, he delivered some pretty sweet Kronos, but it just wasn't enough in the end to go and deal with that kind of trifecta of the Bounty Hunter, the Sven, and the Nature's Prophet, who all got a lot of farm. Most definitely, most definitely. So, hello, this is Dog. We'll advance to the final round of the Winners Back at All Be taking a look at who's going to they're going to be up against and give you guys an update as soon as I can. But in the meantime, go through a couple songs and uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, if you guys don't know me and you just tuned in recently, uh, I am Blaze Casting, an up and coming Dota 2 caster with VODs on youtube.com slash blazecasting. Or if you're watching on YouTube, you can check out my live stream at least up every Sunday evening. But I'm going to do some video guides and other different live events where I'm going to do some giveaways and stuff on my live stream of twitch.tv slash blazecasting. So be sure to check both those out. I frequently do some co casting with my buddy Rainmaker here and uh, we'll try to bring you the best Dota. Uh, Dota amateur stuff that we can, so awesome. Yeah, cheers, guys. GG's.